How do you add contrast to infrared images in Darktable? I'll show you how. Are you interested in learning more about infrared photography? Check out my book. Details are at the end of the video. Okay, let's talk about contrast. There's a whole lot of ways to adjust contrast in Darktable. So I'm just going to type contrast here into the module search, and we'll look at a few of these. Let's start with local contrast. So local contrast is pretty straightforward. Remember to, to turn it on. This is one thing you got to get used to in Darktable is whenever you're using a module, you will not see any changes until you turn it on. So once I'm here, now I can adjust the contrast based on whether I'm looking at the highlights, the shadows, or the mid-range. So, for example, if I wanted to take the shadows and increase the contrast there, I could increase this slider, and that'll bring up the shadows here in these trees. I can do the same with the mid-tones, and then you could deal with contrast for highlights as well. So you could look at each of these individually and decide how much contrast that I want to apply. This is a quick and easy way to add contrast to your image. I'm going to turn this off. And we'll look at the next option, which is color contrast. So this is a way to add contrast based on sort of tints. So we've got a green and magenta contrast slider, and I can slide that back and forth, and that will add contrast in the colors. So this is another way to get kind of that hue, hue shift, but with, with different looks as well. So I could do that with green and magenta, slide that a couple different ways. So for example, that, that red color looked really cool. And then I've got a blue, let me just reset this to zero by double clicking. And then I've got blue yellow. I can do the same thing. I could drag this around to impact the contrast. So increase the color contrast of the blues and yellows or decrease. So these are some interesting options for adding color contrast to your infrared image. The next panels for contrast that we want to look at are curves. So I'll type in curve and I can see those. The first one is tone curve. So I can enable that. And a tone curve works very much like the curves panel that you would be familiar with or the tone curve from say Lightroom or Photoshop. So I can simply click and drag to affect how I want an image to look. If I wanted a simple S curve, I could do something like this, and then that would give me that look. There's also a number of presets available. So you can pick a preset to jump to a specific look. And this is a great way to quickly set a contrast or try some different contrasts without just simply manually adjusting the curve itself. So play around with these different options and find a contrast that you're interested in. I'll disable tone curve. And the next one we'll look at is the RGB curve. So this is the same thing, but it is, it's allowing us to do it on a per channel basis. So I will turn this on. I'll reset this back. By the way, these other buttons up here, the, in addition to the preset hamburger menu, we have a reset button that allows you to reset all the settings for just this module. So that's convenient if you want to get back a baseline of zero. And then the other option is a duplicate. So if you want multiple instances of a panel, so let's say you are doing some masking and you want to use a panel multiple times, you can use create duplicates of those. By, by the way, speaking of masking, I'm not going to get into that in too much detail here, but every module can have masks. You can draw masks and these masks could be circles, ellipses, paths, brushes, gradients. So there's a whole variety of tools you can use that could define that you want to apply the effects of a module to a specific local portion of the image instead of just the image as a whole. And you can do that with masking and many of the modules have that as an option available to them. So let's go back to talking about the RGB curve. So I've got all of the channels here that would be similar to just the tone curve. But if I wanted to, I could uh, select each channel independently. And now I have access to a tone curve for the red, green and blue channels. So now if I make an adjustment to the red channel, it'll affect just the reds, more green or more red. I could go to the green channel, which have different effects. And again, you could spend time tweaking, you know, shadows, highlights, different parts of the curve that you wanted to do things here, or I could do the blue channel. So there's a variety of ways you can increase contrast in your image, alter the, the tones of your image in various ways using, using the tone curve and the RGB curve. All right, let me disable this. And now we're going to talk about some really advanced contrast options in Darktable. This is where things get pretty exciting. So I'm going to go to the equalizers. So we'll type in equal. And if I knew how to spell, 
then I would get to the right place. So now we have two equalizers. We have the contrast equalizer and the tone equalizer. So we'll start with the contrast equalizer and I will enable that. This is gonna look very different than most of the modules you've seen up to this point. I'll reset this back to zero. What's interesting about the contrast equalizer is I now have the ability to set contrast based on multiple conditions. I can either set contrast based on luminance, so how bright something is. And so this is kind of like, if you think of like a stereo equalizer, if you're like me, you maybe had one of those equalizers with the lights that you could slide up and down for your bass and your, your mid-range and your treble. This is kind of the same thing, but it operates in luminance. So it's going to be the, the dark up and down and the dark portions of the image, but it's not affecting brightness per se. It's going to affect contrast in each of those areas. So you have a lot of control, a lot of granularity here. So I can take the luminance, the contrast in the shadows, and I could drag that down again. A little bit goes a long way here, or I could increase the contrast in the shadows. So looking at this, you can adjust these. You also have parametric controls to affect how these peaks work. You can imagine here, there's a ton of flexibility and a lot of power that's contained if you really want to very granularly control the contrast in your images. Next up is Chroma, the same tool set, but it, instead of operating on luminance, it's based on colors. You might have less of an effect here with an infrared image because we're not going to see the full visible light rainbow of colors. This might not be as impactful as the other two options. And then edges allows you to set contrast based on how strong an edge is or how weak an edge is. And so you've got some options here to play with. This is something that if you are really interested in tweaking the contrast of your image, you can deep dive in here and learn a lot more about the contrast equalizer. I will shut this off and we'll look at the tone equalizer, which is a similar, similar set of tooling. And if I reset this and then I enable it, Oh, we go. enable it. This is somewhat similar to the tone curve, but it's in this equalizer format. So you can, you can look at portions of an image here and you can drag them up and down to increase the amount of contrast that you want in various parts of an image. Uh, very similar, but it's kind of an interesting take on the tone curve, this, this tone equalizer. There's a simple view of this, you know, just like an audio equalizer, you can drag up and down at various brightness levels measured in, in stops. You can go to the advanced view, or you can then even do masking. So if you're really interested in taking your contrast game to the next level, the options that are available in Darktable are pretty amazing. Have you mastered any of the contrast modules for Darktable? Share your tips in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about infrared photography, check out my book, Color Doesn't Exist, a practical guide to infrared photography. It's full of details for photographers at all skill levels. Now available in print and ebook editions. Check it out at infraredbook.com. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, like, subscribe, or comment. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.